Sometimes in 3D printing, there's large files that are too big to fit on our printer. The best thing we can do is slice those files up into smaller pieces that can be printed individually and then secured back together again to make the original larger piece. In this video, I'm gonna show you how I glue and plastic weld 3D printed parts together to make them seamless and strong. Welcome to my channel. This video is part four in a long tutorial series I'm currently uploading on how I built my Boba Fett cosplay from start to finish using all 3D printed parts. My first step with all these pieces was to give them a good sanding. It's important to sand all the edges that are gonna be glued down together. Firstly, to make sure that they are flat, but also that the texture is slightly rough so the glue has something to bind to. After I cleaned up all the dust from sanding those pieces, I was ready to get out my glue. I really like E6000 for 3D printed parts. E6000 has an extremely strong and permanent bond, but it takes up to 24 hours to fully harden. My main fix for that is to do one part E6000 and one part some sort of other glue that's faster acting to hold the pieces in place while the E6000 sets. In this example, I just use normal Gorilla Super Glue. However, lately I've been using CA glue a lot because it comes with a spray that can activate and harden it immediately. Now my technique for this was to use some E6000 first because it has the longer set time, then go in with some of my crazy glue and hold the pieces together as still as I can until the crazy glue set. Then I followed it up with some tape just to keep the shape in line. With such a large flat surface like the back piece, it'd be very obvious if it changed angle partway through. This back piece is six different pieces, and two of those pieces go up by the shoulder. I believe when I did this, I actually switched those on accident. So when you're printing them, I would advise keeping track of which one's which, so you don't risk putting them on the wrong shoulder and then having some misalignment with the collar piece later on. Speaking of that collar piece, you can see me here gluing that one. It's a little bit thicker than the back piece, so in some ways it was easier, but because of its flat shape, I actually had a hard time and eventually needed my wife's help to hold it in place too. The next day when I knew all my glue was set, I took my pieces outside to do some soldering on them. This is how we're gonna do our plastic weld. If you take an old soldering iron and dig it in between the seams of two different plastic pieces, you can remelt the plastic, and it's just like welding two pieces of metal together. I initially went through and did the seams just to make sure that the seams were relatively melted, and then I even took my soldering iron and dug out further past the seams and scraped towards those seams to build up the material a little bit. The main safety caution I wanna put out there right now, doing this is likely gonna melt a whole bunch of the glue. Some of that glue will escape in the form of fumes. Do not breathe in those fumes. I recommend being in a well-ventilated area and also having a mask and goggles on. Here I've cut up some old rafts from previous prints. I'm using those like extra welding material. Now if you're watching this and thinking you can't do it because you don't have a soldering iron and you don't know how to weld, I've never welded and I've never used this soldering iron for actual electronics. Trust me, if I can do it, you can do it too. Usually I just use those rafts as extra bits of material to melt to go into the original pieces. However, with this collar piece, when I was heating it up, I kept having issues with it trying to bend in half. That's the one thing you wanna be careful of. I'm just using PLA Plus. If I get it too hot, it may start to warp and melt. Of course, we're trying to melt it to weld it, but when it started to melt in a way I couldn't control, it began trying to bend in half. Because of this, I actually took a large raft piece, cut it to size, and then welded it into the back and basically completely melted it down and smoothed it all on the inside of the collar piece. Because of that, the collar is extremely strong and it's not gonna have any issues bending or breaking in the future. For the back piece, I did each half on its own, gluing and melting, and then the other half gluing and melting, and then eventually I glued them and melted them together. In this clip here, you can see me using a thin raft to literally put it into the soldering iron to melt it and smooth that right into the crack and the seam between the two back pieces. Another thing you could use to do this would be old filament that got left on a spool that wasn't quite enough for you to print another print out of. That's why I think it's so smart to save old rafts and little bits of filament that you may have left over because you never know when you're gonna use them. When I went to glue the two large back half pieces together to make the entire back piece, I had a very hard time keeping the alignment straight. It just wanted to slide and move. I ended up borrowing my wife's help to get these clamps on each end so I could make sure each half of the back piece stayed in position as the glue set. In this clip, it looks like I actually ended up going through with some Loctite plastic weld over the seam on top of the other glues as it was setting just to make sure this thing didn't move at all. Once that back piece was all glued together, I soldered that one as well. Now most people solder the inside or the areas that you can't see, but they won't go plastic weld the outside because they're worried about the finish. I personally do it on the inside and the outside, and overall my cosplay came out almost perfect. I do have one area of the back piece where you can slightly tell there's a seam, and one little area of the jetpack where you can slightly tell. It does bug me, but after these stages here, I do the best I can to smooth it. Speaking of the jetpack, after my other pieces were done, I began gluing that as well. One thing that makes the jetpack a lot easier 
is because of how wide it is, the way that we sliced it, it has these large flat surfaces where you can spread glue all over the place, instead of just a thin seam like on the back piece. The jetpack has a massive like eight inch area where you can just fill it up with glue to make sure it's super, super well bonded. I found the jetpack definitely easier to glue together. I used glue all over those surfaces and ended up very carefully using some ratchet straps and bungee cords to hold it all in place. Of course, with the ratchet straps, be super careful. If you pull it too hard, you could easily smash and crack this plastic. To keep the jetpack light, I only printed it with 5% infill. It doesn't weigh very much. I did put like three or four walls on it, so the walls are relatively strong, but if I tighten these ratchet straps too tight, it would absolutely destroy this thing. Once I had glue and straps on the jetpack, I also put the glue on my rocket piece that eventually is gonna insert into the jetpack. I used those little tabs to be able to put these hand clamps on to keep it in place. This was also a piece that was fairly difficult to keep steady while the glue was setting. With the straps still on there, I decided to plastic weld the inner seams that are eventually gonna also then get glued together. It was then time to plastic weld all those other seams together as well. After that glue was mostly dry, this clip here is a good close up of how I kind of add some material and melt it down to sort of rub it over that seam. I believe soldered irons do come with a flatter tip and it might be smart for me to switch to that. It would probably be easier than this single point tip I'm using here. Eventually I had all my large pieces glued and soldered together. Please subscribe if you found this part of the tutorial helpful. However, if you wanna see some more problem solving when it comes to 3D printing, I then tried to take my back piece and do an initial fit with the jetpack and it wouldn't fit. Now luckily the fix for this problem ended up being fairly simple. I went through with my Dremel and sort of opened up all the holes a little bit more and especially focused on the lower inside corner of that bottom ridge on the jetpack that's supposed to fit into the back piece. The end of that seemed to be a little bit just too cornered and square and it didn't want to fit into the back piece. After that, I ran into yet another issue. The sort of pointy shape at the bottom of the back piece on either side wasn't wide enough for my body to fit into. It was pointed too far forward and it was digging into my back. To fix this problem, we're gonna get into a little bit more of a complicated technique to modify a 3D file after you've already printed it. Essentially, the technique is to use a heat gun and then open that part up a little bit. You might be thinking that doesn't actually sound that complicated. The problem is that when you start using a heat gun on a 3D printed part, it's gonna warp and melt in very unpredictable ways. It can be extremely difficult to actually bend it and shape it the way that you want it to go. To ensure that my flat parts stayed flat and my bendy parts were what was actually bending, I ended up cutting up a bit of a board that I had just laying in my garage and I clamped the center part of the back piece onto a flat table. This made sure that there was a hard flat surface on top and a hard flat surface on the bottom. So even if it started to heat up, ideally it wouldn't reshape or warp at all. I then just worked my heat gun focusing on that main corner and then lightly using the other little board to push out on that outer piece to try to open it up. Definitely go slow with your heat gun, don't heat it up too much too fast. And when you're using that board to kind of pull it out, you can pull it out and sort of hold it there and as the piece of plastic starts to cool back down. If you're able to do this correctly, it will maintain its shape. In this clip, you can see how much I had to modify the shoulder parts as well. The one on the left, I had to push up to get it to actually fit over my shoulder and meet up with the collar the way it was supposed to. With how fast this time lapse is, it's actually pretty easy to see how much I moved that shoulder piece to get it to fit me the way I wanted it to. Thank you very much for clicking on this video. If you found it helpful, please subscribe. I hope that this tutorial on how to glue, weld, and modify your 3D prints helped you in some way. If it did, leave a comment below. I'd love to see that as well. The next part of this Boba Fett series is gonna be actually how we finished and got all of our armor ready for paint. I also have a couple of other projects that I'm hoping to finish soon. I'm going to start peppering those videos in as well. I really want to be able to bring you guys more consistent content. Please hit that subscribe button if you're interested. Thank you very much.